All right, so this is another different view for us. We're giving you a whole display of everything we have going on it's here. It's perspective, really. It's all about it, and we're uh, trying to, you know, tie in all of our videos now. Because now you can see that how we monitor our networks while we're That's doing right. our videos. Because it's behind us. Mm -hmm. If it spikes, it would sound off a warning. Or no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. At all. It doesn't do that at all. No. So you let us know if something's going on and tell us when you view it. Anyway. So we're going, uh, I guess, a little bit more old school as uh, a little bit more instructional in this video uh, based upon the fact that there's something that is coming up pretty big from Google that a lot of people who have Macs and Windows computers yep. uh, and also using G Suite use. Yeah, so let's back up a little bit. We, um, we decided to go Google Apps about five years ago. So at the time, we had a lot of users using Microsoft Office. We had a lot of users using um, Apple's iWorks, Pages, Numbers, Keynote, uh, Microsoft Office equivalent on the Mac side. Um, so a moving, lot of people using Pages. Yes. So people. and they love the templates and all this yeah. stuff. So we weren't going to force them to Google Docs and say we're getting rid of the program. You really can't on a Mac anyway. Um, but one of the things that we put into place or, or assisted people with was mm -hmm. this Google Drive Sync application. So Correct. You download it on the Mac. And then basically you could take all your files and dump it into this and it would push it to Google Drive I know, so it would save it in the cloud. I know on the Mac they called it Drive for Mac. Right. That's what they refer to it as. I don't remember what the, the term of it was for on Windows uh, per se. But um, with Google's continual change of ha and ease of use of Drive where you can drag and drop files out of your Explorer or Finder directly into um into the web view, uh, Google has decided that to have that sync option for them wasn't uh, feasible to keep going forward to well, support it. The other thing, too, that we found is that it was easy to take, like, all of your documents and drag it in that first time. Right. But then the problem was people were looking at it thinking it was on the local computer right. and deleting it and right. deleting it in both locations accidentally. Luckily, right. we have a backup system in place that we could talk about later, but um, it became a nuisance. So this this new version is sort of trying to help out with not allowing people to do that as easily. Yep, so what they decided to come up with is uh, Drive File Stream yeah. is the name of the new application. So um, if you are using Drive for Mac or any of the uh, uh, same product for Windows, it will be no longer supported. Um, I don't know what the actual data on that is, but it is going to be very soon based upon the release of this video, which is in 2018. Um, so uh, we would highly recommend that you go ahead and start transitioning over to um, the, drive, the drive file stream. Right. And in order to do that, it probably makes sense to remove the uh, drive for Mac first and then go ahead and install uh, the drive file stream. And we'll put all the links of where you can find that into uh, the description of this video so you can just pop right in, download it, and, and go from there. That's right. And, and obviously, moving forward, we would still like everybody to create everything in drive itself. Yep rather than have to do this, but we do understand that there Correct. are some certain file formats you may have saved that still need a place to go, and this seems to be the best. So what's the best path we need to take here to turn off Drive for Mac? Yeah, so that's a good point. So I have Drive for Mac here on my computer already loaded. It's on a Mac, and if I click that at the top of the screen because it just sunk all my files, um, I can quit Google Drive for Mac first so that it removes it from my top menu bar. And then I will quite literally go into my Finder under Applications. Yep. And here we are. We're just going to find Google Drive. And I'm just going to delete that. And you just drag it to the trash. Yep. On Mac, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, again, if there is an equivalent for Windows, you probably have to go into your program files, into Add and Remove Programs, and all right, uh, Control Panel, Add and Remove Programs, and delete it from there. I'm, I'm just shooting up that top of my head for many No, I think you're Windows. right. And, and I wouldn't panic. A lot of people said, whoa, you just deleted everything. No, I deleted the application, not the files. Yep. And on a Mac, don't forget, even though it's in the trash, you do have to do one more thing. If you click on Finder at the top, Empty Trash, that'll actually get rid of the program. Whereas if it's in the trash, you just move locations. Yep. And so now there is a website out there. There's actually a couple different websites you can go. They're, they're, they're all Google support drive, uh, Google support sites for drive, where you can go and download uh, the latest version is the Drive File Stream. And again, we'll put the link to this one that we're looking at right now into the uh, the description on the bottom of the page. Right. So I did, I went to one of those uh, pages and it just says download and install Drive File Stream, which I did. I'm on a Mac, so I downloaded it for Mac, which loads right here as a disk image in Chrome. 
And when I boot that up, of course, it's going to take me through the setup process to install this. So I'm just going to quickly do that, and we may speed this video up a little bit for um, it won't take long. your sake. But then we'll show you how it looks a little bit different than what um, you were used to if you used the Google Drive for Mac. Yeah, it's no more like the Drive for Mac was a direct sync. So you, when you set it up, you would set up a folder you wanted to sync to. And it would go through and anything you save, like if you saved on the Mac to documents and you sunk your documents to your Google Drive, everything you put in documents automatically went to Google Drive, which was fine, you know, loading some of the stuff locally, but sometimes there was things you wanted that you didn't want to sync. Right. And um, if you had, for, like if this was used in business and you had a limited amount of file storage, like you don't have in, in, in education, you're fine, you can say whatever you want there. But if you want, if you had a limited amount of uh, uh, storage either on your computer or in Drive for whatever reason, you'd want to be able to pay attention to that so that you're not, you know, just syncing the whole thing. This is going to create a copy in both areas. Basically, what it does, as Eric's signing in now, um, is it gives you a shortcut on your computer to your Google Drive. Right. And you'll see as soon as it's done. It's actually pretty quick. I can talk my way through anything. Yeah, now it's it's still up at the top. The logo is a little bit different. It's now a black box with the triangle. Um, but then when you do that, and it does ask you to sign in so you can authenticate to which drive it is. Yep. Obviously, on it, a Mac, I'd want This it. is only available on Google for Business and Google for Education. Right, it's not on my personal you side. You cannot use this on your personal side. It does not work at this point. Right. You had an extension blocked. <laughs> so this may happen, and if that's the case, if you go into System Preferences, Security and Privacy, um, Apple has changed their kind of directions on what they want to do for their apps. So system software, you just want to allow that one time. Um, and then once you've done that, you can go back in and open it up and it should work. All right. So now once it's launched and it's actually syncing correctly, um, like you said, if you for some reason have to go in and, and make that change to allow it, uh, it's probably best to exit out of the software and open it back up so that it can go in and allow and actually start synchronizing everything you have there. You can see it's seeing Eric's files. It's loading all his stuff. It's actually, all it's doing is giving you a live view of what you have on your Google Drive. Right, so if I went over to Google Drive itself here online, went to My Drive, this folder structure and all the files that are underneath it should start to show up here um, in here once yep. it loads up. And obviously the first time you run it, it's gonna take a lot longer to Especially when you stuff. have as many files as you have <laughs> saved on I here. might have a few, yeah. Yeah, and so, but if you also, uh, at this point, if you go into Finder, yeah. you should be able to start seeing the drive uh, set up there. And you can see under devices, you can see Google Drive. Right, so now it's under devices, yep. whereas this one right here was the old one. Deal. But if you go back to Drive, you can see if you have Team Drive set up, you'll see your Team Drives in here as well, which is the good thing which you could not do before with the older version of True. it. True, Team Drives did not show team up. Team Drives did not show up. So basically it's showing there with a picture of the cloud so you know that it's a cloud sync folder. If you open it up, it's just dragging stuff directly in. That's, yep. that's all it is. And that looks identical to if I go back to, yep. whoops, if I go back to Drive, and click on Team Drives, those same names for Team Drives is the same that you now see. Yep. Well, it appears to be local, but it's actually saved so to the cloud. So it's a pretty simple uh, process to go through, but just remember that it is not a live sync like it used to be. That's true. If you want to save the documents on your desktop, you're not syncing your documents to your desktop, you have to copy them in, and you're, you're creating two copies. Okay. Um, same with your documents. If you save your documents now, you're going to want to make sure you go into your documents and make copies to Google Drive. Um, Pay attention as well. Uh, if you try to open a document out of here, it, it that is a G doc, it will open up Chrome. So that's kind of the point. Right. Is, is that it's using Chrome. Uh, if you happen to save a Pages doc into there, you're gonna want to open that Pages doc or uh, directly out of that folder again um, in your Google Drive under Devices. If you try to open that direct that Pages document in the web view, it will crash. It right. won't work at all. Right. So. So again, if you can't create and save everything right in Drive all at once, then this is probably your best method. Yep, great way to back things up, make sure you have everything you need, and then be able to open those documents, especially those, uh, those pages documents. For some reason, the pages, and it, it's just com written completely different. They don't play well together. That's true. So, all right, so there is another video in the bank, ready to go. In the folder. In the folder. Yeah. In the, in, in the cloud. In the stream. It's streaming to the cloud. Right.
All right, folks, as usual, you know how to get in touch with us. If you uh, need any other help or any other videos put up there for instruction for you, um, and if there's anything else you would like us to talk about that may not be instructional, um, why we do things we do, give us a shout-out uh, at our Twitter channels or in the comments below. All right. We'll talk to you later. See ya.